Hi, this is Dave Spector with Chicago Blues Camp, and today we're going to look at one of uh, the classic tunes of Chicago blues from the 1960s, Jimmy Reed's Big Boss Man. It was recorded on VJ Records in Chicago in 1960, and uh, Willie Dixon was on bass, Earl Phillips was on drums. Uh, Lonnie Brooks, who uh, was then known as Lee Baker, is one of the guitar players on it. I found that very interesting. Uh, Eddie Taylor's often associated with Jimmy Reed, Eddie Taylor, one of the great Chicago blues guitar players, but uh, Lee Baker, Lonnie Brooks, was one of the guitar players on this. This song has been uh, inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and there are at least a hundred covers of it from everyone from uh, Coco Taylor and B.B. King to Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, The Grateful Dead, even Nancy Sinatra. Uh, we're going to learn it in the original key of E, and we're going to talk about the great intro that's on the original recording, uh, which you don't hear a lot in clubs, but I want to show you the intro because it's a good example of the use of double stops, uh, just basically a two-note chord like <laughs> examples of double stops. So the intro, um, one thing I want to talk about and stress in all, all the lessons and and something you should think about when you're playing is setting up a tune with a count and having your foot tapping to the count. Uh, Big Boss Man is a two beat, it's not a shuffle, um, and uh, most commonly uh, a very similar standard that has the same type of beat, the same type of groove that you hear a lot these days is high heeled sneakers, same type of groove. So we're going to play it in the key of E with the intro, two, a one, two, three, four. Uh, so let's talk about the intro in Big Boss Man, which is a, uh, a good example of how to use double stops. And um, the intro starts at the 12th and 14th fret. My index finger is on the 12th fret E string, and my ring finger is on the 14th fret B string. And I'm going to keep this pattern, this relationship of spacing with my fingers a full step on the E string up to the B string. I'm going to keep this pattern from the 12th and 14th, 10th and 12th, 7th and 9th. So let's just take that part. Then there's a pause and it repeats. Then it goes to 5 and 7. Index finger on 5, ring finger on 7 B string. So the second part is and then it resolves to the pattern changes to the index finger on the 4th fret high E string and the middle finger on the 5th fret B string. So let's try that intro in time, 2, 3, 4. And then the little turnaround comes in, which uh, is a great turnaround associated with a lot of Jimmy Reed tunes. Most commonly you'll hear turnarounds like this. Into a B7. This turnaround has a nice single note feel. I'm using my middle finger sliding up to the fourth fret on the high E string. And then two open strings. Open E, open B. Second fret G string with my middle finger. Open E again. Hammering on to the first fret on the G string. Couple options there. So the intro in time. Ok, 
Okay, so spend some time with that. And uh, the basic groove in E, we're just going to be on the, uh, on the lower strings, just kind of doing the, the classic lumpy lump rhythm. That's some Chicago blues terminology for a shuffle, a Jimmy Reed shuffle, an Eddie Taylor shuffle. When you're in a club in Chicago, you hear somebody say, hey, let's play a lump in E. This is the lump rhythm. And this is with a big boss man groove. A normal Jimmy Reed shuffle groove would be. So we're just focusing on the two lowest strings and I'm doing a little palm muting. Um, so I'm at the uh, second fret with my index finger on the A string. The E string is always open. Going to the fourth fret on the A string with my ring. And you have the option of playing the fifth fret on the A string with your pinky or sliding your ring finger. I'll do it both ways. So on Big Boss Man, the rhythm is two, three. Let's do that again. That zipper might have been in it. <laughs> two, three, four. goes to the four, when it goes to the A, same pattern, just everything moved down a string, open A, second fret with the uh, index finger on the D string, fourth fret with the ring finger, fifth fret on the pinky, and you want a nice balance of those two strings. Back to the E. Right there I'm doing, you don't have to do it, but it sounds cool. You can just do. I'm losing the muting there from um, kind of a fuller, more open sound. And here it is on the A. to the B it gets a little more difficult. You have a couple options. You can use the low two notes of a B bar chord. Important to use your fingertips here. Call that a power chord if you wish. So your index fingers on the second fret of the A string, ring fingers on the fourth fret of the D string, and then your pinky's going to stretch to the sixth fret of the D string. And I'm going to show you a little trick You can do that, or you can do. So when we're doing the E and the A, we're hitting that seventh. When we're on the B, stretching all the way with your pinky to the seventh frets, pretty much next to impossible. But that note is right here. So that same note, that seventh, can be found if you just bar, like you're playing a normal B bar chord. So I'm just lifting up my pinky and I'm hitting that note because my ring finger is barring it. So let me play that again. You're only there for one bar. couple turnaround options uh, instead of more commonly you'll hear first turnaround I ever learned was and I'm just walking down the G string to the E string fourth fret a nice picking pattern is down up down up down up and then hammering on to the major third, which is the first fret of the G string with your index finger. 
And then hitting an open B seventh or sliding a half step up C7 to B7. So let's take it from the five, two, three, four. show you another option for a rhythm part um, which is a great part to play either if you're the only guitar player playing it um, but especially if there are two guitar players in the band and this basically is doubling this idea but we're gonna play it using an E to an E6 which is just your open E chord your pinky's on the second fret B string to the E seventh pinky on the second fret on the third fret B string. So open E, E sixth pinky on the second fret, E seventh pinky on the third fret B string. And then just go back. For those of you who aren't accustomed to using your pinky, this is a good opportunity to really get it going because it's a, it's a really important tool you have that you should be using. Um, so let's take that real slow. And it's the same notes as sound really great if both guitars are are playing those two different parts at the same time now when you go to the four chord to the A and the five chord the B I'd recommend using a bar chord so it's just your A bar chord you can lift up your pinky making an A seventh there and then your pinky comes down on the seventh fret B string for the A sixth eighth fret B string for the A seventh, and these are the, you're playing two different A sevenths here. This A seventh is a lot more subtle. This A seventh with the pinky on the eighth fret B string is a lot more defined and pronounced, and it, it's a, it's a great seventh chord to use in blues. So from the four, that A that A pattern for Big Boss Man. B, same thing as the A. Okay, so we have uh, a couple nice rhythm guitar parts. We have a couple turnaround options. Uh, let's just review that intro. I also want to talk about rather than playing in the open position on the E and the A, which is definitely most common, um, we can also go up here and play a uh, this form of the E bar chord at the 7th and 9th fret. And here's your little E power chord. We're going to use this in the rhythm. So first finger is on the 7th fret A string, ring finger on the 9th fret D string. And then our pinky's going to get a nice workout. And I'm going to use that same little trick where I'm going to bar on the 7th fret. 
And this note, it's actually a D, is going to be used uh, as part of the rhythm with the bar. Two, three, four. four chord, I go down to the low E string and the A string, this little A power chord, and then there's that G note, the seven. It's a nice option to have rather than all playing in the open position, which you'll generally hear 90% uh, of the players do. So those are the two different ways to play rhythm, that lumpy lump type of rhythm um, in E. I also want to show you another option in B, rather than using the full, the full bar chord, you can actually just slide your first finger up to the 4th fret. And you kind of don't want to play any of the lower strings. Just use this as your one. And then you go to the D string on 6 with your ring finger. So barring at 4. Pinky on seven on the D string. So it's basically just the same shape as the open A, just moved up a full step. Okay, big boss man. Hi, this is Dave Spector with Chicago Blues Camp. Thanks so much for checking out the lessons and please subscribe to our channel. And I hope you'll also please join me for our Zoom video sessions. Cool.